How do NPCs in games like these actually see you? That's what I want to find out. So I designed my own NPCs from scratch to figure out how it's done and how difficult it actually is. And now I'll tell you how I did it and the mistakes I made that you should avoid. So hi, I'm currently making my first ever Roblox game and I would like that game to blow up. And with the current state of the internet as a whole, including Roblox, the most important part of going viral is retention. So keeping people engaged in whatever you're making. But when I looked at my game and even played it myself, it was really boring. All I did is walk around and click, plus the speed at which you gain power is way too slow. So there are two birds with one stone, I want to add NPCs, which you can fight to potentially gain more power, health and money. Yes, that means I also had to make them attack back. But to do that, I had to learn something I've been putting off for months. You see, if you want your NPCs to not constantly be walking into walls, they're gonna need pathfinding, kinda. Basically, you need your NPC to see what is a player and what is not. But Roblox rigs don't have eyes. Yes, they do have two dots on their face that are supposed to be eyes, but there's no function called C, so I had to make it all from scratch. I started out by making a hitbox to detect if anything enters the area around the NPC. This is pretty easy since I have used hitboxes before. Except for one mistake that I make way too often. You see, when making a hitbox, you only want the hit to detect once, but Roblox detect every body part all at once. So this means that every time you walk into a hitbox, it does whatever you want it to, to do like 16 times. The way I fix this is when running the .touched function, checking if the player is in the table. If they are not in the table, the function keeps running and then the player gets placed into that same table that we were looking through before. With this, once we have run the function once, it can't keep running because the player is in the table. Like how you should subscribe, but only once. Because when you already subscribe, there's no need to do it again. And this works fine with most hitboxes, but not the ones I was using. I used constant hitboxes that won't disappear, so that means once the player is in the table, they couldn't get detected. But how did I fix this? Pretty simple. You just need to run the .touch ended function and then remove the player from the table. Now that I know when the player is close to my NPC, I need to make it so they can see at you. But they can't. Well, not in the way that the player does it. They have no camera and they have no feature that you can easily enable. But there's of course one way. Raycasting. I'll explain it quite quickly. Basically, you cast a line from a point in a certain direction, and then it returns a bunch of things about whatever it hits. The direction is probably the hardest part, at least for me. It's actually quite simple. But I'll get back to that once it's needed. So whenever you enter the NPC's sight range, it shoots out a ray in your direction, and if the line hits any of your body parts, we detect that. Ray cast detection actually works the same way as hitboxes, where the ray hits individual parts, so I have to detect if it is a player or if it is a part. But now you're probably wondering why you would use ray casting instead of hitboxes when they do the same thing, and ray casting does sound more difficult. So what really is the advantage of ray casting? Well, like I said in the start, ray casting works like vision, so if a wall is in the way, the ray hits the wall, therefore it won't detect you. That's why I use ray casting for my game. Since we have a lot of structures in our game, I don't want the NPCs running into walls, that's why I chose to use ray casting. Ray casting can also be used for more advanced pathfinding, where you can have them walking around randomly, but if they see a wall, they walk around it, I'm pretty sure. I don't really need that right now, but it's nice to keep in mind. Oh yeah, the direction of the ray. It's pretty simple. You just need to subtract the position of the target from the position of the source. Well, uh, this works, and the NPCs can detect you and see you, but this part I hate. Now they have to walk to you. And frankly, this sucks. To start, I didn't even know how to do this. I tried tweens and stuff, like Pivot 2, but that didn't really work. Plus the fact that they weren't even animated. So I used my classic strategy of just adding a colon after the humanoid, and I actually found a function called move2. It works as it sounds. It moves the parent of the humanoid to a specific position. But the problem with that is that they move into the player and either they fling themselves or they fling the player. It actually also seems like the game Dead Rails had the same issue. I remember playing it with a couple of friends and suddenly one of us got flung really really far away and then a message popped up saying something like anti-fling activated. I don't know if it has been fixed yet but I haven't seen it since. If anyone knows how to solve this issue, please comment. Well, except for the fling bug that I couldn't fix for the life of me, it was working. I just want to clarify that this isn't really pathfinding. 
It's just simulating NPC vision. I've talked about getting it to work, but what about the other bugs that came up? And how did I solve them? One bug I had was when approaching an NPC from the side, the raycast would return an NPC. Since every one of the rigs were named NPC, I didn't know which one it was hitting. You would think I could have just renamed one of them, but no. Lucky it didn't take me too long to figure out what I was doing wrong. I was simply hitting the NPC which the ray was coming from. And the way I solved this? Well, when using Ravecast, you can choose the parameters. And one of those parameters is filter type. So you can choose whether you want to include or exclude certain parts. So what I did was setting the filter type to exclude and then adding every single body part of the NPC to a table. And yes, I could have done this better, but it did not take enough time for me to do it any other way. That's really the only big bug I can think of. But there are a couple things you have to look out for. For example, you only have to run the move to function when it is a player that has been detected. The way I did this was simply checking if the parent of the part hit was the player who walked into the hitbox. If it was, I activated the attack function. Now this took a bit of balancing to get right. See, in my game you could get more health, and to start, I was balancing the NPC off of purely the damage it did to a new player. However, I had the damage of a player with around 70,000 power. So I restarted the data stores where I had zero power and only 100 health, and suddenly it was way too difficult. I was getting killed every time, instantly. The hitbox was unfair and unpredictable, and too big to be able to get a hit in. And since I had low power, I was dealing zero damage. So I had to do a lot of tweaking, like shrinking the hitbox a bit and moving it back to match the fist. I also rebalanced the player with the help of my friend, who helped me realize that the NPCs weren't the full extent of the problem. So I made it, if the player has over 100 power, it deals one tenth of, of the power of their punch. But if they had under 100 power, they would just deal 10. This really helped balance it out, plus it also just improved the general combat. It actually also helped with another part of the game's balance. And yeah, the NPC combat system works the same way as the player. I made a quick animation to see when they punch, but it wasn't that easy. Of course it wasn't. First of all, I had the raycast function running inside a while loop. A couple of difficulties spring out from this. You see, the attack was running in a different script, which seems fine, but I had to use a bindable event, and well, it would be, except for the fact that I'm a bit silly sometimes, and I can only focus on one script at a time. So I just got confused a lot, especially whenever a function would fire repeatedly because of the while loop. To explain overall how my system works, whenever a player enters a radius, we begin shooting raycasts in their direction, repeatedly, if the parent of whatever it returns does not have the same name, as the player entering the radius, nothing happens. However, if it is the same name, we fire a bindable event. Then in another script, we listen for whenever that event is fired, and when it does, we play an animation, and then we create a hitbox. The problem arises whenever the ray hits the player, multiple times, per second. That of course means that the bindable event, and therefore the attack function, gets run multiple times. And of course, I didn't think to just test this with a print before. No, I just made the attack script, and then had it print. So I thought, the attack was the problem, but I couldn't find it. Now what did I do? I went to sleep, because what else am I supposed to do? When I woke up, I then had the brilliant idea to check the other script, and I then stumbled upon my mistake. And when I tested it again, I was sure. But the way I chose to solve it was very stupid. It was probably because it was early in the morning, because I just woke up, but my first idea was disabling the Raycast script through another script, but I couldn't get that to work. So I then did the right thing, but still kinda wrong. I made another smaller hitbox to check if the player was close, and if they were, then I would fire the attack event, which is of course, I tested the attack script. I don't remember why I did it, but that's how it works now. And I guess it's fine, it just makes them smarter when they only attack once they can hit you. Unlike you, Bloxfruits. Now, I said earlier that this also helped with another part of the game's balance, and that's because we decided that for our game, we would have the NPCs be useful and give the players a reason to fight them. So we gave them a chance to drop items that boost your stats, like plus 100 health, power or cash. But while making this, I made the same errors last time with my cash grab game. The problem was not the script running multiple times, it was the script running in multiple different characters or blocks. But it got solved quickly by just checking if the NPCs is the same as the script parents. I didn't use the name, since all of them are the same, but by just checking what the NPC is, it worked. Then we select a random child from the table with power, cash, and health, and then we find a child in the server storage with the same name. We then clone it and place it on the humanoid root parts position. 
But of course they need functionality, so just make it so whenever you touch them, they disappear, plus they give you the stat equal to their name. I did make it a bit more difficult to myself, because I wanted our beautiful models to be seen, so I just added a small weight before they were added to the workspace. However, I still changed the position of the item before the weight so it didn't spawn through the floor. And that's it, but before you go, I want to tell you about my friend. He's the one I'm working on this game with. He just made his channel and should have a short out right now. I'll link his channel in the description, so try checking it out. And that's how I made an NPC system to figure out how it was done. I hope you enjoyed and make sure to watch this video next. See ya!